In the past three NBA regular seasons, teams averaged around 25 points per quarter. However, there have been rare instances in NBA history where individual players have scored over 30 points in just one quarter. With that said, let's take a look at every time a player has scored 30 points in a single quarter, starting with the highest scoring quarter in NBA history. Welcome to Sportsphere. Let's get into it. One of the things that made Klay Thompson so dangerous with the Golden State Warriors was his lethal shooting, and as a streaky shooter, you don't want Klay to get hot. With defenses focused on Steph Curry, Klay could light up a game in seconds. Not the sort of shooter that you wanted to give open looks to. But back in January of 2015, defenses weren't quite as clued up on Klay. This was weeks before he was heading to the All-Star game for the first time and even before Klay became an NBA champion. On January 23rd, 2015, in Sacramento, Klay struggled from the floor in the first half against the Kings. He was just three from nine from the floor and not really firing at his best. So Klay and the Warriors were hoping that he was going to have a big third quarter. Klay started the second half quietly before nailing a jumper to give Golden State the lead. 90 seconds later, Klay was showing off his elite level defense, jumping in front of the pass to get a steal. With the Kings hustling back on defense, Sacramento did something you never do. They left Klay wide open at the three-point line. It's almost like Sacramento wanted to help Klay break the record with how open they were leaving him. It wasn't just the three-point shooting, though. Sacramento gave Klay and Steph a two-on-one, which Klay finished with a monster jam. From there, Klay kept things pretty simple. He hit three after three after three to make his way towards greatness. He nailed four three-pointers in a row, showing off his ability to create space off the dribble. Klay even had a little bit of luck on his side during this run, helping shots like this go down. Even when the Kings put multiple defenders in his way, Clay still found space to drive to the basket and lay it in. The arena could not have been more hyped, especially when Clay went and hit this corner three with a man in his face. It gave Clay his best scoring performance of all time and broke the Warriors record for most points in a quarter by a single player. But he wasn't done after this shot. The Warriors guard would finish the quarter with an NBA record 37 points, more than almost every player in the NBA can manage in a whole game. It wasn't like his shots were wasteful either. Clay went 13 of 13 from the field and 9 of 9 from the three point line. People seem to forget that Clay Thompson did something we may never see again in the NBA. His 37 point performance in a single quarter looks likely to remain the best single quarter performance in NBA history for a very long time. Kevin Love quite often gets overlooked when people think about the Cleveland Cavaliers team that became the first team in NBA history to overcome a 3-1 deficit in the NBA Finals. But Love was an elite shooting big man, and he could certainly take over a game single-handedly. In the season following that championship win, Love produced one of the best quarters we have ever seen. The Cavs needed a fast start to the season, as the team they had just beaten in the finals had added former MVP Kevin Durant. They certainly got that fast start, winning 10 of their first 12 games heading into a matchup with the Portland Trail Blazers at home. This was a Blazers team featuring one of the best scorers in the league in Damian Lillard. But it was Kevin Love who showed out in front of the cheering Cavs fans. He started off the game in very hot form, hitting a nice fadeaway jumper just 15 seconds into the game. Love and Kyrie then used the pick and roll to give the big man an open shot from the corner, which he nailed. The Blazers must have forgotten how good of an outside shooter Love was, as they left him wide open for another three less than two minutes into the game. Then they left him open again, with Kevin Love nailing his third three-pointer in a row, with less than three minutes gone on the clock. Love could not stop hitting those three-point shots, nailing this long three with a tiny bit of separation to give him a sixth made three in this quarter. The Blazers just couldn't figure out how to stop him. The issue was, they had to focus on LeBron when he drove to the rim. But this left Love wide open, just like on this play right here. By the end of the quarter, the Blazers realized that they had to foul Love to stop him. But the Cavs big man showed that he could nail shots from the foul line as well. Love hit four free throws in 30 seconds to get him over 30 points in just the first quarter, alone. This mean turnaround jump shot made it a whopping 34 points for Love in just the first quarter alone, 
In total, Kevin Love hit eight threes from 10 attempts in just the first quarter alone, and broke the Cavs' record for the most points scored in a single quarter. This was his first 40-point game in over two years, and the Cavs fans in attendance were treated to a historic moment. Carl Anthony Towns is one of the most versatile big men the league has ever seen. He is the epitome of a modern-day center, able to rebound and defend, as well as knock down shots from all over the court. And in a regular season matchup with the Spurs in March 2022, the Wolves needed Cat to have a big third quarter. As the Timberwolves held a narrow two-point lead at halftime that was erased 90 seconds into the third quarter. But it was in that third quarter that Towns would go on to make history. He started by being left wide open at the top of the key and nailing the three-pointer. The Spurs then began to really struggle when Cat would drive to the basket, sending him to the free throw line three times before he would make another open three from the top of the key. He just could not stop scoring the basketball, making his third three-pointer from the exact same spot with minutes still to play in the third quarter. Zach Collins really stood no chance when matched up one-on-one -on -one with Towns. Just watch as the Timberwolves center hits the nicest step-back jumper you will ever see from a center. He followed that up by driving inside for the layup. His free throws, with 90 seconds to go on the clock, gave Towns a 50-point game, but he wasn't done cooking yet. This is the sort of move you would see James Harden pull off. Centers aren't supposed to hit step-back threes like this, and yet it's exactly what Cat does. His driving layup with 13 seconds remaining gave Cat a 32-point quarter and 56 points for the game as a whole. Cat would finish with 60, breaking the Timberwolves' record for most points in a game and a quarter. He is pretty much impossible to stop when he gets going. When Klay Thompson scored 37 points in a single quarter, he was breaking a record that had stood in the NBA for almost 40 years, which was set way back in 1978 when George Gervin scored 33 points in a quarter while he was chasing down the scoring title. Gervin and his San Antonio Spurs were facing the New Orleans Jazz. Gervin was looking for his first ever scoring title, so was putting up plenty of points in what was the final regular season game of the year. Gervin was putting up as many shots as he possibly could. In the second quarter alone, he added an NBA record 33 points. This is particularly impressive when you remember that Gervin was doing this well before the three-point line was introduced. It was a record that helped him win his first scoring crown, and one that took a very special performance to beat it. What is even more insane is that Jervin did this on the same day that his closest rival for the scoring title, David Thompson, dropped 32 points in a quarter. Thompson dropped 32 points when his Denver Nuggets faced Detroit, before he finished the game with 73 scoring the equal second most points in a game, behind only Wilt Chamberlain. That being said, Thompson's single quarter scoring record lasted just a few hours, as he watched Gervin steal that and the scoring title all in one game. Carmelo Anthony is known as one of the smoothest scorers in league history. That was certainly the case when he managed to tie George Gervin's record for the most points in a single quarter in 2008. At this point, Melo was five years into the league, but not finding much success with the Nuggets. His Denver team were losing to the Timberwolves in a regular season matchup. Melo started the quarter with a smooth steal and the jam to finish. This started a barrage of scoring from Melo that included three smooth three-pointers and plenty of those mid-range jumpers that Melo loves. Chauncey Billups kept on finding Anthony in great scoring positions, and it led to Carmelo turning the game around, pretty much single-handedly. He could not stop hitting shots from all over the court. He would finish the quarter off with a smooth layup under some heavy pressure to tie Gervin's record. Melo would set a new franchise record for the Nuggets and came so close to breaking the league record. Denver would go on to win the game, and all thanks to a brilliant third-quarter performance from Carmelo Anthony. Everybody who has ever watched an NBA game knows about the regular season single-game scoring record held by Wilt Chamberlain. All the way back in 1962, Chamberlain's Philadelphia Warriors were facing the New York Knicks. This was a season where Wilt averaged more than 50 points per game, so he was always expected to put on a special performance. Well, by the end of the third quarter, he had 69 points and was getting close to breaking the record. Wilt had previously set the NBA record for the most points in a single game with 78, but he put on a brilliant fourth quarter performance, 
the Warriors players were feeding him the ball, and Chamberlain would just hit dunk after dunk after dunk. He was unstoppable. With less than a minute left on the clock, multiple Knicks defenders couldn't stop him from getting his hands on the ball. Wilt jumped high and laid in the basket that took him to 100 points. But that basket also took him to 31 points in the final quarter. This was the NBA record for a very long time, and one of the forgotten details about his spectacular 100-point game. Wilt played every single minute of that game and broke countless records, thanks in part to a spectacular 31-point performance in the fourth quarter. Just like Cat, as well as Clay, in 2006, Kobe Bryant would also go ballistic in the third quarter of a regular season game. It was November 30th, where the Lakers faced a rising Utah Jazz. And after Kobe dropped a decent 10 points in the first quarter, and 12 points in the second, his third quarter was a different story. He started his third with a ferocious one-handed jam, before getting his classic mid-range J to fall. He then started to focus on attacking the paint, drawing fouls, knocking down free throws, as well as dropping in this and one. His reliable mid-range jumper continued to be handy, even burying this one off one leg. Kobe continued to dominate the Jazz, drawing fouls, and after finding his shot in the third, it didn't seem like he could miss a single jump shot. And it wouldn't be until the closing stages of the third when he made his first three-point basket, only to make one more almost immediately after. Kobe kept on piling on buckets, and especially with so much defensive attention on him, he would draw fouls and easily knock down countless free throws. This saw Kobe claw his team to a massive third quarter advantage, securing a huge margin, where he sat out for the entirety of the fourth quarter. Kobe finished with 52 points on that night, most significantly making 9 of 9 field goals in the third, as well as going 10 of 10 from the free throw line. Anyways, that's it for every single 30 plus point single quarter game in NBA history. What was your favorite 30 point quarter performance in the league? Why not put your thoughts in the comments down below? And while you're down there, hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching Sportsphere, and we will see you next time.